Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel, and I'm astounded by something that new SEC chair Gary Ginsler said. I'm a bit flabbergasted because that's a fun word to use. And I'm going to share it with you and my response to it. And also I want to talk about uh, the idea that from attorney John Deaton's perspective, uh, it's certainly not just uh, XRP and Ripple that are under attack. In fact, uh, it, it may be the case that Ethereum is going to come under fire from the SEC. Ooh, interesting indeed. And, well, because as we've been saying, right, you know, as far as the William Hinman speech you know, in summer of 2018, that was just his opinion, not official decree of the SEC, despite the way they positioned it so that the typical person hearing about such news would believe it was official decree from the SEC. So they wanted to have it both ways so that they can argue whatever side of whatever argument they want. That was the reason, uh, which caused market confusion, by the way. I'm pretty grossed out by that, but that happened. Um, and then I'll wrap up the video with this article from Coindesk because it's freaking hilarious. Nothing to do with Ripple, nothing to do with XRP. Stick around for this. Um, here's the headline. Furniture retailer Ethan Allen is changing its stock ticker to avoid crypto confusion. Can you guess why? <laughs> oh, I'll just tell you now. It's because of Ethereum. But um, I also want to be clear at the outset. I don't have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos all up on the internet because it's a fun hobby. Damn it. And I do what I want. And so here's the tweet from new SEC chair Gary Ginzer, and, and mind you, maybe I should preface this a little bit here, because you know, right, Gary Ginzer, as it pertains to crypto, he's for the longest time been stating there is regulatory clarity for crypto, right? We don't need a bunch of new rules. There's sufficient regulatory clarity. People just need to obey the rules that are out there. It's not the case that this new technology with crypto and blockchain, we don't need to tailor anything to it. We don't need adjustments made. The rules fit it perfectly. Look back to the Howey case dating back to 1946. There you go. ba -bam, You got your damn answers. I'm Gary Ginsler. That's what I say. No. <laughs> the problem is that's not in line with reality. But um, even though he's been saying that, uh, like he engaged in uh, what I would, I would characterize as a bit of a hypocritical comment because he's applying standards to one market that he is not applying to another Take a look at this tweet from Gary Gensler. Just yesterday, he wrote, Rules mostly adopted 16 years ago don't fully reflect today's technology. We need to look at ways to freshen up our rules to ensure our equity markets reflect our mission, maintain fair, orderly, and efficient markets, and ensure we protect investors and facilitate capital formation. And so I, I, I read that for the first time, and for obvious reasons, my response was the following. <sighs> that smack was a facepalm, if you heard. I hope the mic picked that up. That was a facepalm. Right? That was my response the first time that I read this. <laughs> I was like, what in the ever-loving hell? This is why we cannot have nice things. This is why we cannot have nice things. Gary Gensler, what in the ever-loving hell are you talking about? Now, I, I understand why he's been saying that uh, there is sufficient regulatory clarity. I, I get it. He's running the SEC. He's got to make his organization look good. And if he said that we do need to have additional clarity. Uh, that would pretty well de destroy, I mean, to the degree that it could be more destroyed, uh, the case that the SEC has versus Ripple, because the case is not looking so hot right now. And so if you have the head honcho top even saying, yeah, there's not sufficient regulatory clarity, then it's like, what in the ever-loving hell are we doing right now? What are we doing? Yeah. And so I read this because, again, he's saying, yes, uh, my gosh, we need to account in equity markets for today's technology. Things have changed, but he says the opposite for crypto. And so I wrote the following. Rules applied to equity markets from 2005 don't fully reflect today's technology, but rules applied to crypto markets from 1946 do fully reflect today's technology, question mark, which is why my inflection goes up like that. And then all I could do is just one emoji, this little like glazed over face looking guy, that guy right there. I, I was like, that's that's the right emoji for this. That's that's uh, it was like audible sigh, face palm. That, that, that was the response. And I felt that pretty well captured it right there. 
what in the ever loving hell is going on? They're like the stuff we're getting from Gary Gensler, it's fairly ridiculous. And then there was this video clip. This is a really cool mashup. I'm not going to play it. I, I just, I don't like playing stuff from networks because even though I know I have the right to play clips, I get that. If anybody wants to make a claim, like I, I, I just, I, it's not fun. I don't even want to deal with it. I want to even try and combat that and get a strike against the channel or any crap like that. And so I avoid it by just not playing uh, network news clips, even though I'm allowed to play short snippets. I understand that. I just am not interested in having false claims levied against my channel for any reason. I don't want that to even be a potential option, so I'm just not going to do it. But it was a cool mashup. And basically, it just showed Gary Gensler talking about what constitutes an ICO, you know, uh, you know, investors putting money into something, expecting some sort of return. Uh, he wanted to effectively identify ICOs because they were specifically talking about crypto here, of course. And then it was spliced in between comments of uh, Vitalik Buterin talking about how they were launching their ICO back in 2014. Even It wasn't called an ICO back then. That term had not been coined, if you will. <laughs> See what I did there? But it, that is what it was. It was, it was absolutely an ICO. And it was, it was just, uh, just very fascinating. So it was created by somebody named Rohan Vora, who wrote, this is my masterfe- masterpiece. It's called Ethereum, the Crypto Security. And so seeing the back and forth, because what Gary Genzer is saying is a security, uh, Ethereum lines up perfectly. It just does. And this doesn't mean I want the SEC to go after Ethereum and the Ethereum Foundation. I'm not saying that. In fact, I hold Ethereum. I'm just saying, by his words, it sh- that should be the case. And in fact, Gary Gensler, before William Hedman's uh, Summer Comets 2018 came out, uh, he had actually, Gary Gensler had publicly stated that he believed that both Ethereum and XRP were securities. That was his opinion in the, within the first several months or so of 2018. And so John Deaton saw this clip and he retweeted it and he wrote the following. XRP holders warned that the SEC vs. Ripple case was a threat against crypto. Vitalik Buterin, who of course is a co-founder of Ethereum, Vitalik Buterin called XRP an S-word coin, uh, although Bitcoin maxis call ETH an S-word coin. Uh, Anthony Pompliano, who of course is a Bitcoin maxist, Anthony Pompliano, took jabs at Brad Garlinghouse and Ripple. And, uh, and BlockFi is now in the crosshairs of the government and Ethereum. And so note that just the other day when Gary Gensler was speaking publicly at that Aspen Forum, whatever it's called, Aspen, what was that? I can't remember the full name. It was Aspen something forum, whatever it was. Anyway, I covered it pretty in-depthly. I just can't think of the, the, the full name of the, the actual uh, entity for some reason. But uh, regardless, at, at that event, Gary Gensler was asked specifically about Ethereum, and he refused to provide any sort of clarity. So it looked like he was kind of walking back the way that uh, it was being treated under the previous administration when, when Jay Clayton was was the SEC chair. So is Ethereum actually going to be in trouble? I, I don't know if they're going to launch anything but uh, against them, but they absolutely could. That's in the realm of possibility. And then you look at uh, Anthony Pompiliano, the comments that, that John Deaton was referencing, I've actually talked about on my channel before. It, it, on December 22nd of last year, when the SEC filed their legal complaint against Ripple, Anthony Pompiliano put out a tweet, something to the effect of, Good morning to everybody except those who thought they could sell securities and get away with it. Which was a clear dig at Ripple and Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson, all three being named as as defendants. And I didn't take too kindly that because it's pretty clear to me even in the earliest uh, earliest of days that this is an attack on the entire crypto sector. And Anthony Pompliano just, he is not a fan of Ripple, he is not a fan of XRP, and he saw an opportunity to take a jab rather than unite and say, hey, just so you know, uh, crypto fellow crypto folks out there, uh, this is an attack on all of us. Rather than take that approach, he had the little, little snarky uh, good morning to everybody except for those who have sold uh, unregistered securities and thought they could get away with it. And the reason that's so rich, though, and I reported on this a couple weeks or so ago whenever the news broke, because this inst- that tweet instantly came to my mind. But Anthony Pompliano, who owns, uh, he's, he's one of the founders of Morgan Creek Digital, which is a crypto hedge fund. Uh, they ran a funding round for a company called BlockFi, which offers interest-bearing accounts so you can put your crypto in there and just earn interest on it passively, just doing nothing, which is a cool idea, actually. And Anthony Pompliano... He actually ended up on the board of directors of BlockFi. And so um, BlockFi ended up being accused of selling, you guessed it, unregistered securities, cryptocurrency. Yep, it was, they were absolutely, they were accused of selling unregistered securities in the crypto sector. 
And so I'm just sitting there thinking, huh, I guess Anthony Pompliano was saying a, a good morning to everyone except for himself and BlockFi because they thought they could get away with it. And look, I'm not even saying they actually did anything wrong. I'm just saying, my gosh, if I believed in karma, and I don't, but if I did, I'd be like, eh, right there, right there. <laughs> So it's, it just, it was just like one of the most rich moments. I've like, I, I really enjoyed that one. I did. Now I'd rather we just all come together, but if people are going to refuse to be part of like some sort of cohesive crypto unit and they're not because they're tribal, uh, well then when you get yours too, don't be surprised. But yes, indeed, they, they, they for sure could come after Ethereum here. Um, and then there was this from uh, somebody within our community named Aquidity Capital who wrote the following. This is a war between the United States government and U.S. Tier 1 banks who control the SEC, and then parentheses he writes, a rogue U.S. regulatory agency, uh, in parentheses, and their enforcement agenda. Handing regulatory oversight of crypto to the SEC is allowing the fox to guard the hen house and will be the death knell to U.S. innovation. It's an interesting idea, and so John Deaton actually retweeted that and wrote the following. Think about this for a moment. The SEC governs securities. Why is Gary Gensler focusing on decentralized finance and claiming it needs regulation by the SEC? It's called decentralized finance. Why is the SEC even considering getting involved in decentralized finance? Good question. I don't know. I don't know that there is a good answer to that. That is, I mean... It, I mean, are they? Because look, it, it seems like it's such a stretch to me, because you'd have to argue that something is being packaged and sold as an investment contract, as a security. I mean, if there's a legitimate argument, some aspect of this, uh, okay, uh, maybe. But in a general sense, no. This 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 doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. It, it just it seems to me, and I've been highlighting this. Uh, really ever since, well, more intensely, at least ever since December after the SEC went after Ripple, but it just seems super clear to me that the SEC is reaching for as much power as possible and they're going to get away with however much other humans let them get away with. They need to be ranged in and they shouldn't have this much much power. They shouldn't be able to have this much oversight on uh, all sorts of aspects of finance that really uh, should, should not fall under their purview. That, that's the way I'm looking at it. Uh, here's a tweet from Jeremy Hogan, and uh, he shared a comment with a fr from a friend and then his response to it. So his friend's comment was, why are you putting money in crypto, shorted companies, mining, all that weird stuff? And his response was, where is better? Regular stocks? I remember the dot-com bubble. Real estate? I remember 2009. Hold cash? I've read about the 70s. Crypto seems relatively safe to me. And it, look, it is fascinating. Look, there's always a place, like, there's always a, a, like a green market somewhere. There's always a bull market somewhere. And it's just a matter of finding that and being there before all the money floods into it, which is easier said than done, I suppose. Uh, but for crypto, it seems a little bit easier because there's, there's like 12 years worth of data and humans seem to be acting the same over and over and over again. But yeah, as, as far as stocks, look, I don't believe for a moment that the American economy is actually going to go away. And there's stock markets all over the world, but I'm talking about America because that's where I live. But but as, as far as the um, you know American economy, I don't think that it's going away. I certainly do not. I don't want it to. I don't think that it will. I really don't. And as long as they're going to be in a, there's going to be an American economy, there are going to be people to speculate on the, the the stock market. And so even when there are major pullbacks, like you saw in 09, it's it's not going away. But it still does look like it's kind of in a bubble, does it not? At all-time highs and this and that. And so I don't know when that bubble is going to pop. I don't know if it's going to run up for another year or three years. I, I don't pretend to know. I, I don't. But at some point, it's going to pop. And um, still, you know, even though that's the case, though, I still do believe that those people that have like a, a very long-term mindset and just put money in over a span of decades... Even accounting for the major pullbacks, you still end up substantially better off, you know, thanks to the the uh, the eighth wonder of the world, which is compound interest. If you just regularly invest from a very young age over a span of decades, I mean, you, you can be middle class, and if you just um, if if you just invest regularly from a young age, you can be a multimillionaire. And if you don't believe me, my gosh, I, I've only talked about this so often, but I'm not kidding. Like compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. Google compound interest if you don't know what this is. Find a compound interest calculator, start playing with it, 
and understand <clears throat> that things snowball as you you you, you uh, invest money it becomes worth more and then if you don't take out the, the out the part that made your little wad become worth more then that that becomes worth more and just grows and grows and grows and uh, eventually exponentially and so j just even just being middle class I mean, even if you're only making like uh, your whole life, your whole life, say say you don't have any upward mobility beyond like even like, you know, 40, 50, 60,000, whatever, just make up, make up a number, which would be a normal, nice salary for many people, especially in the Midwest. Uh, <clears throat> even at that, if you, if, you, if you plan from a young age and then just invest, you'll have millions of dollars by the time you retire. I, 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 like, that's not even taught in school and it's just so frustrating and disappointing people don't realize the opportunity like you, the, the, people have this idea that in order to reach financial freedom you have to uh, just strike it rich or be lucky or something like that or just have some incredibly high paying job but it's actually not true you can just have a nice regular salary which is a respectable salary and, um, and, and even if you didn't experience upward mobility beyond that type of range you can still be worth millions of dollars I kid you not Google a compound interest calculator. Um, it's a real thing here. And so that's why for me, like, even though, yes, I, there could be a bubble here. If you think long term enough, it probably, frankly, doesn't matter. But uh, Jeremy's, Jeremy Hogan's point here is not lost on me. This is true. Bubbles, see, bubbles form in every asset class. And that's why to me, bubble is not such a dirty word. It doesn't mean that something is scam and it's going to zero. It just means like, prices ran up quickly. Uh, the market's ahead of itself and prices need to adjust based on supply and demand dynamics, which, you know, they are what they are. Um, and then cash, certainly, I'm not keeping money in cash. So that's for damn sure. That, that's just like a melting ice cube. Uh, inflation is eating its purchasing power away. And so crypto sounds perfectly reasonable to me. Um, but ultimately having a diversified portfolio is what I'm going for. But yeah, it's all these people on the outside that just don't understand why we're in crypto. My gosh, you need to maybe do some more research and get a handle on exactly what the crypto space is. Because it's incredibly appealing and it is not going away. And it's messy and volatile, fine, happy to admit that, but that's part of the market's just figuring stuff out. The, the, the crypto asset class is in its nascency. Well, that's okay, though. All right, and shout out to my fellow XRP YouTuber, James Rule XRP, who shared this last piece, which is really interesting. You're going to get a kick out of this, I think. I certainly did. This one's titled, Furniture retailer Ethan Allen is changing its stock ticker to avoid crypto confusion. This, is, this comes from Coindesk. U.S. furniture maker and retailer Ethan Allen Interiors wants you to know that its vision of American design is meant to evoke classic country and coastal and modern. It does not do crypto. To make this clear, the company announced Thursday it is changing its New York Stock Exchange ticker symbol from ETH, E-T-H, to E-T-D to avoid confusion with the cryptocurrency Ether. <laughs> that is hilarious. The Danbury, Connecticut-based company's stock soared earlier this year, which many analysts attributed to retail traders conf uh, confusing its symbol with the identical abbreviation for Ether. <laughs> Gotta love this. The native currency of the Ethereum network. And here's a quote from Rishi Khanna, CEO of StockWix, told uh, the Wall Street Journal the following in May. We've definitely seen a massive increase on a percentage basis in mistaken activity on the Ethan Allen stream. <laughs> are you kidding me? People, people are purchasing stock in a furniture company thinking that they're buying a cryptocurrency? Who are these mouth breathers? Oh my god. It finally happened. We got we got the crypto on the, on the stock exchange. Oh. I'm going to get, oh, I'll get mad, I'm catch my breath. I'm, I'm going to get me some, some ETH. Oh. Like, is that, is that what's happening right now? Is that actually what people are doing? I just, I cannot, I cannot imagine this. I just, I can't even, I am not capable of evening right now. Oh, I think it's funny. I'll wrap up there. I am not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.